So one of the issues that I faced making low poly terrains is how do I carve rivers out of them? I kind of like this general shape that I've got going on here. I've got uh, this nice angular angulation going on in my mountains. I've got a little bit of variation on this flat area here, but I want to cut a river into this. I want to add a river to this. If I go into edit mode, I've already applied my modifiers. I've got kind of these weird shapes, uh, these weird shaped faces. It's pretty hard to select the right faces and push them down to kind of form a, a riverbed. And so this is something that I've been working on and trying to figure out better ways to do. So what I want to show today is a way that I figured out how to do that. Um, and that's going to use several modifiers um, to cut out a river out of our terrain. So let's go ahead and get started with the carving of the river through our terrain. Uh, I wanna add an object, and for my version, I have the ability to add a single vertice. It's not always available. So let's start with a cube. I'm gonna pull that cube up so it's a little bit more where I want it. I'm gonna go into edit mode, and then I'm gonna hit spacebar and search for merge. You can see I've already searched for it here, merge. And then I wanna merge at center. And that's gonna take our cube and turn it into a single vertice. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to go back to object mode, um, and I'm actually going to put it out beyond my terrain. So once I've got that position more or less where I want, I'm going to go back into edit mode, and making sure that my vertice is selected, I'm going to extrude that. And what I'm going to do here, continuing to extrude, is I'm going to form the basic shape of my river. And what I really like about this method is that I, I can, it, it's, not, it's non destructive. I can, I can kind of play with the shape and I can move these vertices around to match uh, what looks good, what I like. Okay, so there we go. I've extruded these vertices out into the basic shape of my river, and maybe I want to move these around a little bit. That was pretty easy to do. And so now what I want to do is go over to my modifier tab. Here in modifiers, I'm going to add a couple different modifiers. I'm going to add a skin modifier, and you can see what that's done. That's added uh, dimensions to my, or three dimensions to my, what was otherwise a one or two dimensional shape, however you want to think about it. Um, I now have volume to my shape. I'm going to leave this as is, and then I'm going to add the subdivision surface. And what that's going to do is kind of round it out. Now, how many of these subdivision surfaces that you choose to use is up to you. And by that, I mean over here. Um, we've got sub number of subdivisions over here. So we've got the view. And what this is, this means it's going to show us one subdivision in the view. But when it renders, it's going to render two. We're not going to render this, so I don't care about this one. Um, depending on what you want the uh, riverbed to look like, you might increase this number. You can get it. You can get it very smooth if you want. Uh, for my purposes, I've actually found that one works pretty well. So now what I've got is this basis for a riverbed. And I'm going to bring this down so it actually collides with my terrain. All right. And so what we're eventually going to do is carve this shape out of the terrain with a Boolean modifier. But before I do that, this the, the river's all the same size. It's the same width. Uh, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? I got these three tributaries coming in. It, it, it should be getting larger. So I'm going to go back to a top-down view. And I'm going to go into edit mode. And now with the skin modifier, I can't really see my vertices. So I'm going to press Z to go into wireframe mode. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale these up. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to select my vertices here. Maybe I'll select a bunch of them. This can also be done with proportional editing. This works pretty well. Uh, I'm going to choose these vertices, and these are the vertices. I'm going to I'm going to increase their size here. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to press Control A, and if I press Control A, they'll now scale up. You can see how that's working here. Um, I've made it all bigger. Uh, if I go back out of uh, wireframe mode, you can see that I've sized it up. Now, one of the things that I've run into a little bit is now that I've made this really deep river, that's maybe not what I wanted. Um, that causes some issues in the gameplay because now my player can go underwater. So I may not actually want to do that. Um, so I'm going to go back into uh, wireframe mode. I'm going to undo all that. And 
what we can do is we can scale these in different directions. Now this thing is laying down um, and we can scale it in either the X or the Y direction. That doesn't really seem to correspond to the X or Y in the global system. So if I press Control A again, again, that's my scaling. But then if I press X, I can scale just out in one direction. Something like that, so my river gets a little bit fatter. Now, if I wanna do this with proportional editing, it also works. All right, so I'm gonna get it turned on proportional editing. I'm gonna press Control A and then X to do it in the X direction. And then I can get kind of a tapered effect like so. And now what I've done is I've created a wide river that isn't necessarily any deeper than the other pieces of my river. So I can do the same thing. I might go back in here, make sure I press the right buttons, come back in here and here uh, I might narrow it down. So again, I've a little bit locked there. Here. So I'm gonna make that a little bit skinnier. Okay. And so now I'm just changing my shapes. I'll do this a little bit. I'm not going to try to get perfection here. They're just trying to show the method back out of wireframe made mode. And there you can see that I've got my river working. Um, kind of got a general river shape. And one of the things that I look for, you can see this middle seam here. I want that middle seam to be above the terrain. So that, uh, that shapes the riverbed in the correct way. Um, what I haven't shown is here in wireframe mode, you can also grab these vertices and move them vertically. But I don't wanna do that because my terrain is essentially flat. This is flat here. But you could also move those vertices in a vertical, uh, on a vertical axis to adjust to rolling hills or changes in elevation. So now that we've got this river shape, what we need to do is cut it out of our terrain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our terrain select our train, we're gonna to go to our modifiers here, and we're gonna select the Boolean modifier. And what we want here in our operation, if you haven't used a Boolean modifier, it's very useful. Um, this is just one of the, its many uses. I, I don't want the intersection. I, I can show you what these all look like. So let's add the, the object. This is the object that this object's gonna intersect with. And we're gonna choose the cube, which is what our river is. Okay, and there you can see that our, our terrain has become only the intersection of the two shapes. Well, that's not what we want. What we want actually is the difference. Okay, And that may not look very different right now, but that's because this cube or river uh, is a blocking what's happened. So if we select our river now and we hide it, you can now see that that's cut or it's carved a space into our terrain to form a riverbed. With a small terrain like this, I can move my river around and I don't get too much lag. If you have a really large terrain, uh, if you move that river around or change the geometry of the river, you can get some pretty significant lag. So what you can do is either remove your Boolean modifier until you get your river just right, or you can click off uh, or toggle off the eye here, which will prevent the that modifier from being rendered in the uh, view screen here. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, especially for just for an example. So I'm gonna click on my terrain and I'm going to apply this modifier. Once I apply that modifier, I can then move my river and that gap is still there. So I'm just gonna move my river over here and we're good to go. Now the next step is to add a river surface to this. And again, this is simpler, it's simplified because my terrain is essentially flat. So I'm gonna get a top-down view again, press seven, get that top-down view. I'm gonna add a plane. I'm gonna go into wireframe mode here and I'm gonna kind of roughly center this. And I'm gonna scale this up. I'm gonna scale that up to cover the area of the river. I'm gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna subdivide this. And again, how you create this river surface is a little bit up to you, the shader you might use in your game um, or what your final, goal here is. Um, I'm going to size that up quite a bit like that or subdivide that quite a bit so I've got sp small faces. What I want to do now is s select the faces that are not going to be part of my river um, that I don't need. And this is not an issue if you're going to do this in Blender, but if you're going to import this into Unity or, or another game engine, you don't need all these extra faces for this river. Um, you don't need the 
game engine have to render this. So I'm gonna do this kind of quick and simple. If I was doing this for a commercial game or even a game I was gonna share with my friends and I want a good performance, I'd be a little bit more careful about this. So then I, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete these faces and that leaves me with a object that really just is the bare minimum of what I need. If I move it up and down a little bit, I can see that I'm now filling in my river and I've got a river surface. How you deal with this edge here is a little bit up to you and what you're trying to do. Um, but I can go back into edit mode here and tidy this up a little bit. So there you go, we've cut a river into a low poly terrain. This is ready to get imported into Unity, Unreal, or any other game engine. It's also ready to get rendered here in Blender if that's what you're looking to do. So I hope that was helpful, thanks for joining. If you have a question, feel free to leave a comment. Come join the conversation over on my Discord server. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Thanks for joining, hope to see you next time.